Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons 5e. And as it happens, the topic for today is about adventuring gear. For those of you who have been watching the series, I've been working my way through the different types of advent adventuring gear you can use. So, using rope in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. There are a few adventuring items that, uh, that can compete with rope. Just a few. Actually, that's a lie. Um, there really isn't any piece of adventuring gear that can compete with rope. It's got that many different uses. And I approached the Dungeons & Dragons community on Facebook and asked them to provide me with some suggestions. I got 350 comments, some of which I paid attention to, and some of it which I have included in this video, uh, and some which aren't really suitable for public consumption. Anyway, here we go. So the first thing is, very obviously, you can use it to tie up your enemies and monsters once you've captured them, particularly if you don't want to kill them and you want to interrogate them later on. You can use it for creating a snare or a trap of some kind, usually just a loop in the ground with a, um, a trip line, which allows them to be pulled up into the tree, something like that. Another really helpful use is when you have to deal with a river. When you're going to transport yourself from one end of the river to the other end, you can use your rope in combination with uh, bamboo or logs or tree branches, tie it all together and create and build yourself a, a raft which will allow you to sail without having to walk or use uh, mounts from one location to another using that river. You can use it as a lasso if you're really good with a, with a lasso maybe you can capture your enemies or capture a, a steer, a beast and then have it for dinner if you really want to. You can also use it for if you tie a rope to the end of the, a tie a rock not a rope why would you do that? So you tie a rock to the end of the rope and it was used to measure depth or distance in water. So you can check the water depth by dropping the rope that's on a rock or some sort of weight that you've attached to it into a pool of water or into the sea or ocean to determine the depth below your vessel as you are traveling along um, your watery grave. No, it's not going to be a watery grave. Not at all, not at all. You can use it to make a rope dart, and I would tie something like a dagger or a piton to the end. A dagger is probably going to be more useful, but if you have like a spearhead and you've got a loop in it, then you can tie that to there. And if you're the sort of person who uh, wants an improvised weapon, a rope dagger can be kind of useful, particularly because it's got a lot of reach. You, got to, you can swing it out quite a long way and then bring it back. It is one of the most commonly used tools, rope, for crossing a fast flowing river. So one person is tied onto the rope, the others hold the other end, they cross the river, making all of the, um, taking all of the risks, get to the other end. If they start getting pulled down the river, it doesn't matter because the rest of the group can then pull them to safety back onto shore. So it's a very, very smart idea. And if they get to the other side, they can tie off both, both ends of the rope and then everybody just uses the rope to cross this fast moving river. So hugely useful in many, many different ways. Okay, so you've got a pair of pants and they keep falling down. Well, a piece of rope you can use as a belt to keep up your pants. You tie it around there, around your waist, and it's now going to keep you up. Fantastic. We'll go with that. You can form a rope chain or line or link to each party member so they don't get separated. Now, this is useful if you're traveling, say, um, in a dark location or in a maze location and you're worried that uh, people will be separated either because of illusions or because of the environment being very difficult to see in. So tying each other together um, could be quite useful. I have found as a general rule that tying the party members together has on occasions been useful and other occasions resulted in tremendous problems uh, which actually have resulted in characters going down so it can go both ways you can take that rope soak the rope in oil and use it as a fuse if you want to make something explode um, a rope is a really good tow cable so you can use it for pulling a sled a carriage a boat or an animal um, out of muck or through water or a variety of, across snow all those sorts of things so ropes are always useful for that sort of thing uh, when you combine a rope with a pulley, you can use it for lifting heavy objects or creatures. 
and then of course you can then use that pulley system to shift uh, the heavy weight much easier than you could be before. Now for those of you who are sort of prone to smoking, if you're really desperate and you've got hemp rope, I suppose you could smoke the hemp rope if you're desperate. I don't think it's going to taste very nice and I don't think it's going to be the best smoking experience if that's the sort of thing you're into doing with your characters. But you could always give it a go. You can use the rope to set up a trip line. Now not a trip wire because the, the rope is going to be far too thick but provided that the location is um, heavily obscured or it's darkness there's a good chance your enemies might fall over the trip line if you set it low enough and uh, you know the area is obscured in some way. You can use your rope to tie a drunk party member onto their horse so they don't fall off. Or if you're really, really tired and you're riding for a long time, then tying yourself on. Um, I think we've probably seen this in a couple of different movies. For those of you who watch lots of movies, I'm pretty sure it's been done a number of times. Okay, one of the most obvious ways of using the rope is for the spell rope trick. You need a section of rope for that and therefore really simple make sure you have a piece of rope make sure you cut the rope before you need to use it. You don't want to be doing this in the middle of the adventure or in the middle of combat so make sure you've cut your rope already for your rope trip. Um, rope, rope trip. Okay what about swimming swinging across a gap? So when you want to board um, another ship swinging across or you want to um, swing across a crevasse or a, a section um, where there's just no way you can jump it then using a rope might be useful particularly if you have a grappling hook at the other end and you can swing it and snag it onto something or you've already fastened it off in some way through either magic or maybe you've sort of like got some of the means of um, securing it. Securing it at the top and then allowing you to swing across that gap. You can use it for tying supplies onto your mule so that it doesn't wind up getting lost or dropped off or falling off. Um, you can tie a bell to a rope and set up some sort of alarm system so that that trip line uh, when it's tripped setting it up around your campsite will uh, be, be knocked and of course it will activate the bell and then you'll be able to hear somebody who's trying to sneak up on your campsite and do some sort of horrible thing to you which of course no dungeon master has ever done surely not. Uh, what about using your rope uh, tying it onto a harpoon and then now you have a harpoon line and you can go shark fishing don't ask me what you would use for baits. There are probably many different things you can do. I would suggest going with blood. I wouldn't use your uh, party members if you can help it. But these things do happen sometimes. You can use it as a safety line when you're walking along a ledge. So one of the biggest problems when you're um, trying to scout across a ledge is the chance that somebody might fall. Now I know what people are going to say, well Fred, yes that's all very good, but if one falls they're going to drag everybody else off the edge and then somebody's going to wind up having to cut the line and it could wind up causing more problems than it's worth. So what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that the people who are more likely to be able to support the weight are in the right place. And it's not a stupid idea as you're using a line to connect each other to make sure that the line is also from time to time secured uh, via a uh, piton onto the wall where you are. So you can tap it in and then as you slide along um, you remove it, unhook it, pull the piton out and continue on. And so there you have a backup system just in case somebody falls off the ledge and then you're worried about the entire group being pulled to their death. You can use it to tie a door closed. Now this is really only going to be double doors with, that have a door knob or door handle in some way that you can tie it around but that will help tie it up. That way it will give you time to escape when you need to run from the enemy who are vastly outnumbering you or just more powerful than you. Uh, you can wrap it around your hands and arms to add protection uh, either when you're fighting or when you're dealing with some sort of uh, natural hazard or unnatural magical hazard of some kind. So it would add a little bit of uh, protection to you so the rope gets burnt before your skin. Uh, you can use it to pull a door open from a distance so you tie on the rope onto the doorknob 
and then you get further away because you know if you think there's a trap there an evocation spell or a ward and you want to open the door without getting blown up and you don't want anybody there that might actually be the easiest way to do that when you want to actually open the door so get out of the danger zone so using it to pull open a, a door uh, it can be used as an improvised harness for a mount you can lash tree branches together so if, if you're out in the wild you've got no tent lash those tree branches together that you've cut down and you can create a shelter a bivouac of some kind allowing you to protect yourself from the elements the weather that sort of thing uh, if you are in a position where you need to get from a high location to a low location you may be able to set up yourself a flying fox zip line so you can have a quick escape so you then tie it on to your high location you have it uh, tied off um, down the bottom where you went to uh, to finish your line and then of course you can use a belt or some other item to uh, use as a way of don't use your hands you're going to wind up with no skin on it obviously you need to have something that isn't going to wear through the rope and isn't going to wind up breaking so um, a, a sturdy belt around your um, uh, waist or maybe just uh, a couple of lengths of rope that have been linked together and just double it up or triple it up in some way you can use it to make a splint for those of you who have injured characters and your dungeon master is saying look it's going to be very very difficult for you to get from one location to another without um, doing something with your, your injured um, character and you don't have any healing spells well this is a good time to form a splint so get a couple of pieces of wood a nice and straight and then tie it on with your rope you can use it now this is a far, fairly far-fetched but we're playing dungeons and dragons it's fantasy anyway right you can tie an arrow onto your rope and shoot it across a gap, a chasm, um, chasm, a space, a gap, whatever, and allow you to hopefully, if it's strong enough, um, hook onto something and then you can then create yourself a, uh, another zip line or um, a support so you can clamber along it. If you're the sort of person who likes a tight rope, then I suppose you could also use it as a tight rope uh, and cross one, one point A to point B where there is no space to actually stand. Uh, tie on a crowbar or something that's heavy onto your rope throw it down a passageway and pull it across there to detect traps now I've kind of talked about this option before in previous videos with a different item it's just sort of like a follow-up if you ask me you can use now <laughs> these last ones are a little on the odd side for those of you who are wondering Fred they're starting to get a little bit strange well these last three no I'd say the last two are a little bit on the wacky side so you can use it to make a noose if you decide that you must hang somebody I I don't know why you would want to do that but if there's some sort of dark sort of fantasy that you have to fulfill and you've decided that hanging is necessary then of course you need a rope to be able to create a noose and then you just need a high location to tie it to and then it's uh, it's hanging time um, you can also use a length of rope as a strangle line or a garrote particularly if the sort of individual who doesn't want to use a dagger and they feel that you know by using the garrote they won't be able to talk or speak or make noise rather than sneaking up from behind and stabbing them in the back you're going to use your garrote or your length of rope okay and of course there is the most obvious way that you can use a rope if you absolutely must and that is you can use a rope to climb up and down a mountain a wall a cliff if you absolutely must now if you're going to do that sort of thing make sure you have a rope and a grappling hook or a climbers kit is probably much smarter because you then you get the benefit of having a harness and pitons and there's a lot of extra safety features involved in using something like a, a climbers kit rather than just a standard piece of rope tied off at the end now one of the things that uh, has probably been discussed more than a few times at my table and at uh, other Dungeons and Dragons groups and that is when you get your rope it's actually much easier to climb the rope if you knot the rope now here's the thing if you're going to knot the rope it's going to make it shorter so you need to make sure once you've knotted the rope that you have a talk to your dungeon master and say look how long is my rope now because you might need a number of sections of knotted rope to be able to get 50 feet down whereas a, a length of um, 50 foot rope is probably going to get you about 50 foot down or up uh, even if you tie it off there's only going to be a little bit of rope not there probably um, more than enough that you can cope with the drop um, at the end 
So, or the, you know, getting onto the rope in the first place. So these are all the ideas that I thought you might find useful for the use for the rope in your Dungeons and Dragons game. Um, I have hundreds of videos for players and dungeon masters, which you are welcome to go and check out. I actually have a series on how to use adventuring gear in Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Now it can be applied to other versions of Dungeons and Dragons um, so you're welcome to go and check out that playlist. I have quite a few items there that you might find useful. Now if you want to support the channel so I keep doing videos like this then uh, I have a Patreon page. Uh, I also have uh, affiliate links down in the description to the book depository and Amazon uh, and buying stuff there supports the channel as well. I also have a merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos where you can buy merchandise from me. Now, make sure to share, like and subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And I go live and I publish quite a few videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.